Hi guys, I've uh, spent the afternoon at Mum's, haven't long been home, it's uh, started 8.54, so it's come out to 9 o'clock in the evening. Uh, it is pretty much chilled out, went up in the attic to see how Stepdad's getting on with his model railway. Getting there, there's still a lot of building to do. Um, regarding ballast over the lines to make it look like a real railway line and that's going to take a lot of bags to do that looks like it's going to take me a lot of bags of tiles to do footpaths but uh, it will get there eventually I'll just buy what I can when I can um god uh, don't pardon me it is getting there, he's got the platforms in, he's got all the track laid. That's done. It's not a very large circular, in fact it wouldn't even fill up this lounge. Half this lounge, probably. Yeah. Because, um, the attic isn't actually that big. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Or he's going to do that. He's nearly there. There's lots, basically it's now just... Aside from finishing connecting up the track to the power, because you have to do it at intervals around the whole layout, um, wiring up all the electric points and all the other lights that he wants to put on and whatnot, and so on and so forth, it's pretty much just scenery now. Well, most of it is just seeing. You ain't got a lot left on the actual track to do, is what I'm trying to say. Like I said, there's a few points to wire up and some ballast to do. That is it, track wise. That's just a few points. I think. I think we've worked out there's about 10 more to do. Something like that. Um. Yeah, that's all right. He's done about five of the points. And uh, it's looking like spaghetti junction under that box as it is. I don't want to be hidden if something breaks down, because that's going to be a pain in the ass to troubleshoot. Um, I think if it was me, I'd have wired it up a little bit more tidily so I could actually follow it, but never mind. Uh... Yeah, but once he's done that, it is just... He started on the scenery, he has done some. Um, it is quite a time-consuming hobby, because it's not as... Um, well, it's not as straightforward as building something like this. This is, uh, you know, quite straightforward. I build a building... Well, I build a building up here, and once I'm happy with it, I stick it on here. You know? And it could take me, well, a matter of hours. But, uh, well, actually, if I worked constantly without a break, I could probably get a building that sort of size with all the necessary detail and whatnot mm, in three, four hours, maybe. But uh, with Stepdad's model railway, it could take longer because you've got to wait for glues to dry and paints to dry and it's just a bigger pain in the backside but just as fun I don't think I'd have that much patience though um, you know as far as I want to go next year is to get a Lego train to uh, put up there somewhere I haven't decided well, I suppose I could put <laughs> bridge the gap there. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I could do something like that. Or just have it going round on the floor, around the tables, or under the table. I think of something. I want a train, and I will get the train in somehow. Well, the other option is I could just have an end-to-end -end line. You know, going down sort of part of the lounge. Or even along the front of this, and then perhaps curl the track round and down there, you know. 
find another place to put that. Like up my backside, maybe. <laughs> I'm running out of space. Running out of space. You know, I don't think it's the fact the flat is too small. I think it's just the fact I'm filling it too fast. Well, trust me, if I actually had the cash to spare, I'd be filling it a hell of a lot faster than I do. Like I said, this is... Well, I always had Lego as a kid, but I think I took it on as a hobby... about 12, 13 years ago. So if you actually think of the time scale and what I've got, that's not a lot. But uh, it is all, I'm always adding to it. I tried to add at least one model or one set to it um, each time I do get paid. It's not always possible, but I do try. And I do try to um, buy loose Lego, you know, just a box of loose Lego every now and again, when I can. Uh, you know, when money permits. But obviously there's certain things I've got to put first. Uh, and actually, um, I have to say, the compliance officer I saw yesterday, who took my statement and whatnot, I didn't like him, I didn't like how he was conducting the interview, but even he said, you know, what you spend your welfare money on is up to you, it's not their business, you know. <laughs> I can't stop you spending it on drugs or whatever, you know, it's not legal to do so. So if I wanted to, you know, if I was really that mad, I could spend the full 200 quid a week or a fortnight on Lego. But then I wouldn't eat and I wouldn't pay my rent and whatnot, so I'd be, you know, I'd be right in the shit. <laughs> But that's basically what he was saying, you know. Um, uh, the sad thing is, I know for certain who it was that reported me. Out of spite. That's all it was, out of spite. Because she don't like us and we don't like her. So I wouldn't be surprised if she, she'll do something towards my mum and stepdad as well, you know, try and find something to report them for. Uh, as much as that does piss me off, I did have another downer at Mum's. I was feeling a bit down. But that's only because I start thinking about things. And in my, in my mind, it starts making things out to be a lot worse than they actually are. As even the compliance officer said, the most I'd probably get is a £50 penalty. Which I'll just deduct either in one go or periodically out of my um, ESA. But, uh, yeah. You know, what's done is done. I can't change it. You know, I know I've done nothing. The only thing I've probably done that is wrong is that I've failed to uh, notify um, the DWP that I'd sold a bike or something. Because technically, you are meant to notify them. Even, you know, if I sold the washing machine or that stereo, anything I sell, I am meant to notify the DWP. And it's the same if you claim job seekers. Any money you get, whether if it's a loan from your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, your aunt, uncle, cousin, whatever, you know, £10, £20, whatever, or, I don't know, you want a new car, so you sell your car, or your bike, or your motorbike, or your computer, because you want a new one to change it, you are supposed to notify them. I doubt many people do, you know, they think, ah, pff, what they don't know won't hurt. Usually, yeah, until some bastard decides to uh, try to ruin your life, or try to piss you off, whatever. I think, I think that's a bit of an exaggeration, actually saying ruin your life, because it hasn't. It's just pissed me off. <laughs> no. Congratulations, bitch. Card well played. Sort of thing. Although it has wasted their time, my time, in a sense. But yeah, I would say the only thing I'm guilty of is not notifying them when I should have. Because it's in the print in the booklet that they give you when you claim. But I don't think many people bother reading it. 
And they do tell you when you claim, you know, any changes, anything of this, blah, 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 you're supposed to tell us. But the thing is, if everyone that's claiming JSA or ESA, if everyone did that every day, the phone lines to the um, DWP would be jammed because there'd be too many people fucking trying to ring in, notifying them, so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's what the penalty would be for, basically. For failure to um, notify them. But, um, yeah, other than that, I haven't done anything wrong. You know, I'm not doing... Yes, I have sold bikes. You know I've sold bikes. But I haven't done it as a business. Most of the time, I get a bike I like. I get bored with it, or I find something else at the dump that I like better. So I sell the old one. <laughs> Lather, rinse, repeat. That's what I've done for years. That's why I get through so many bikes. Because, you know, I find it hard to get settled on a bike I like. Actually, ever since I had one stolen when I was in the youth hostel, I haven't managed to get settled with a bike, you know, and feel comfortable with it, not to the point where I don't want to sell it. But, uh, never mind. Like I said, what's done's done. I can't change it. I'm probably worrying about it too much because I've had an icky tummy for the last couple of days and... Uh, these mood swings I've had a couple of times and they're pissing me off as well. So that is one of my flaws as well. I get into a vicious cycle, if you like. <laughs> I get into a down mood where I just feel grumpy, negative. Actually, Mum had a go at me early for being too negative. But um, most of it, I was actually right with her. She couldn't argue, but I suppose when you're being too negative, it does get to get on people's wit. But she does the same thing. She can't complain. Complain. She does the same thing. I think we all do when we're in that sort of mood. But then I start think getting grumpy because I'm in a grump. And that makes me even more irritable. <laughs> so <laughs> it, so um, it might take me a few hours or so to get out. But I think it's taken me its quite a short length of time this time now because it's only taken me a few hours. But sometimes I could be like it for a whole day. Yeah. Sometimes I think I'm glad I don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever because uh, I don't think I'd be the easiest person to live with, to be honest. I've uh, probably got more annoying habits than. And, um. No, not and um, than, um. Um. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, habits. Yeah, I've probably got more annoying habits than the average person. As well as quirky habits, you know. Asperger's, you know, you be quite quirky, same as people with autism. I know in America they've sort of lumped all Asperger's and autism under the same thing, but from what I've seen online, and from the behaviour of people with each, there is actually differences, so... I'm still not entirely certain why America so far has um, dumped all under the one category. I don't know if it's because, you know, Asperger's is meant to be a stronger form of autism, I don't know, or a form of autism, I know it is. But, uh, oh, I don't know. To me, it just seems a different kettle of fish, so to speak, but I'm not an expert. <coughs> I'm not even an expert with Asperger's, to be honest. I, you know, I haven't had it. I was going to say, I haven't had it long. I haven't had the diagnosis that long. I've had it years. I've had it probably, well, I know I've had it since I was born. But it's just, when I was a kid, it wasn't picked up on. Um, for whatever reason. Maybe the school failed me, I don't know. Maybe they just were naive to it. Well, they ignored it deliberately. I don't, you know, I don't know. I weren't the teachers back then. But to be honest, even when I was a teenager and whatnot, I 
barely knew what autism and Asperger's was, to be honest. I don't even think I did know what it was. I remember seeing a couple of adverts on TVs. TV, rather, not TVs. Like I say, I was watching a wall of TVs. <laughs> you know, but didn't really pay much attention. Um, I think one thing that got to me and mum as well with the um, compliance officer is that he claimed to have Asperger's as well, but me, neither me or mum could see any trait in him for that, and I doubt he'd be doing, well he might, you know, someone with Asperger's might, but in my mind I doubt he'd have been doing a job where he'd have to interact with people like that. But then again, I suppose it depends how bad yours is and what it actually affects. Because um, I don't suppose it affects every Aspie in a social manner. Or socially, no. I don't like social situations where there's loads and loads of people around me. Um, especially from on my own. Uh, going to a supermarket isn't too bad. Um, I don't like it, but it's not too bad. Um, you know, I'm just about handled that on my own. If it's a familiar store, I can handle it. Like my local Sainsbury's or Lidl. Now, to be honest, when Lidl was first reopened after they rebuilt the store I was <laughs> a bit sort of mm, not wanting to go in because even though I've been in Liddles it was a new building um, but now I'm used to it I'm used to going in there um, I don't know, it's hard to explain um, I just feel so much anxiety when I'm on my own you know Someone might make, I don't know, a funny noise. They're laughing or something, or they crash into something in the crash. And I'll just get, like, a shot of anxiety go straight through me. Or I might do something, knock into something, and I'll get the same thing. May, um, I don't know, someone might almost walk into me because they're not looking what they're doing, and I'll say sorry, and <laughs> I'll get the same anxiety feeling then, and it's, oh. It does drive you up the wall. Ooh, sirens. I'm starting to think I might have ADHD, just a smidge. Because things like that do distract me. You know, I'd be talking away and I go, talking away like this, and all of a sudden I go, ooh, sirens. <laughs> So I probably have got a bit of ADHD there somewhere. But with Asperger's Syndrome, you can, it does show signs like that. Or well, you can have symptoms like that. Same with um, dyspraxia. Which is what month thought I had to begin with. Because I was showing, showing some signs, but not enough for a full diagnosis. Um, but yeah, Asperger's you can have so, um, some symptoms of that. Uh, I'm trying to think, ADHD, a few other things. Like OCD, that's another one. Um, I suppose I can be OCD when it comes to lighting. For example, uh, a light fitting like that, there's three bulbs in it. If one of those bulbs were blown, it would actually drive me barmy until I've actually replaced the bulb and got all three working again. And, uh... I think that's also something I'd soon spot as well. Uh, same with Christmas. Um, we'd be walking around town, and I'd be looking up at the town's Christmas lights, and I'll be like, there's a bulb blown there. There's another one there. <laughs> And all I want to do is get a ladder, go up there and replace the bulbs. That's all I want to do, but I know I can't. <laughs> but yeah, lights that don't work, that are meant to work, do uh, 
drives my OCD. I don't think mine's actually that bad, to be honest. There's a few things I do that's got to be done in a certain way. Like, uh, for example, every time I print the PC up, Facebook is the first site I open, followed by YouTube. Guaranteed every time I turn the PC on. Then I will do emails, and then any web comics, if there's any I read that have uh, updated that day, you know. So I do have a, like a a set weight uh, when I boot the computer up, um, and it's near enough the same pattern every morning when I wake up. Wake up, sit in bed sit up in bed for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes just to, you know, wake myself up, get the sleep out of my eyes, turn the fan off, etc. Come in here, turn the PC on, go to the bathroom, have a tittle, come out the bathroom, sign into the PC, because with Windows 10 you get the um, login screen. Um, then go and get dressed while it's um, finishing booting up. Then I'll set the computer, open up Facebook, open up YouTube, then open up, usually Yahoo Mail is the first one I check. And then, like I said, any web comics or any eBay or whatever from watching something in, in eBay, I might check on that. Then I go and get breakfast, come in here, watch YouTube videos from my favourite YouTubers. Um, which usually at that time in the morning is either a Bill's T Max video or a Vlog and Life video. Um, and if they haven't got anything up, because uh, I'm early, which isn't often, <laughs> then uh, it might be might be a One Lonely Farmer, BigFlies.com video, something technical. Speaking of one lone farm, he's got a video up. Huh? Wrecked truck. 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 Oops. Oh dear. Wesley, what have you done to your truck? <laughs> Maybe not you. <laughs> Has Tim done it? Tim might have done it. One of the reasons I watch One Lonely Farm, you know, I'm not a farmer by a long shot. But, you know, he does a lot of fixing of his own machinery and his own tractors, and I find it interesting to watch his repair videos, as well as, you know, watching what different farmers do out on the land. So, there's a couple of other farmers I watch on YouTube as well. Playing with pipe and dope. It's a good job I know what Bill's T Max means. Because people could take the dope the wrong way and think he's smoking dope, but it isn't. It's what they call pipe dope. It's a seal that you put around the threads on a pipe and it just stops from leaking. So I'm not a plumber, but I know that. <laughs> e Bishop's PCM ends well. He does some good videos. Yeah, I've got, a, well, what I feel is a good selection of uh, good YouTubers to watch. I don't class myself as a good YouTuber, because I just put up random video blogs, you know. Unless I am actually doing something, because I've got to make an extension lead. Which, uh, I may upload this video, actually, and uh, do that one. We'll clear some space. I've got a tripod somewhere. It's not over here, so where the flipping hell have I moved that to? <laughs> Probably lying so but I remember... Si oh, it's already up here. That's okay then. No. So I'll clear this, because I've got to put that on the end of... that on the floor. My shadow is covering it. And then I've got to stick it in there. Or stick that plug on the other end, and I've got an extension lead. I'm just going to make sure... Yep. Plugs in that end fine. 
Well, I could do it on here because I could set the um this up on the tripod and whatnot. In fact, I'm going to do that. That'll be the next video. It's nothing much, but it's something better to watch from a video blog, isn't it? So I'm going to say thanks for watching, and uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. It's entirely up to you. You can uh, hit either, you know, whatever takes your fancy, or you can just leave the buttons alone. That's up to you. <laughs> like I've said before, I'm not fussed either way. The buttons are there for your choice. And uh, same as the subscribe button. I know I say please subscribe, but again, it's entirely up to you. If you like the crap I knock out, then subscribe. If you don't, then don't subscribe. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you again in the next video.